Now, our next speaker is an IEEE Fellow and Vice Dean of the School of Micro Nano Electronics, Zhejiang University. He was the member for IEEE University Program Ad Hoc Committee from 2011 to 2013, and also a member of the Editorial Board for Proceedings of IEEE in 2013 to 2018. Now, he's also the editor in chief of IEEE Transactions on Microwave Theory and Techniques. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Professor Ma Jian Guo. Uh, thanks, Wine, for the introductions and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I will discuss about the Shannon's uh, formula uh, for future applications. Okay. It is well known in 1948, Shannon published his classical papers entitled A Mathematical Theory of Communications. Uh, in this paper, he defined the channel capacity at the right upper corners. And in the paper, he described the general communication system uh, in the figure one that is direct copy from his paper. Here, he uh, described that the noise sources separate from transmitters and receivers. And also he uh, defined the channel is a normal medium for transmitter to the receiver and could be a wire or coaxial cables, a band of radio frequencies, a beam of light, et cetera, in the paper. And next year, uh, he published another classical papers entitled Communication in the Presence of the Noise. In this paper, he proposed the famous Shannon's theorem. And in this theorem, he uh, proposed the mathematical expression for the maximum available channel capacity C in the equation number 19 at here, also direct copy from his papers. And here he Describe the power P and the average transmitter power in the equation for defining the channel capacity. Uh, then he didn't mention for any other uh, part of the general uh, system in figure one. And for example, for communication, we have the sender and we have the receiver also. What is the power received by the receiver side in this theorem and in his paper. He didn't mention for that. And also we use this power P to describe the maximum available channel capacity. And that equivalently might be for the broadcasting because for broadcasting, we care about the power sent by the transmitter and we don't care about the power level received by receiver. Like right now, I'm talking uh, in my office, no matter how I would be so loudly, anyway, I have the maximum power levels. However, if there were no such wireless communication system and the audience cannot hear my voice, that means for the receiver side, that receives nothing. Therefore, for meaningful communication, we have to define the power levels in the receiver side, then to determine what will be the maximum capacity can be received rather than be transmitted. That is the main point for my talk. And also in his classical paper in the theorem two, he uh, defined the noise he supposed that the noise is wide thermal noise of power N. Okay, then in his figure, figure one, this noise N used in the channel capacity equation might be from noise sources. However, we know any hardware system that will contribute additional noise due to the devices being used for example, even in old days, there's the communication system uh, worked out by the vacuum devices because at that time, the transistor 
haven't been used yet. However, for those vacuum devices that have noise, not only for the white thermonoid, there are also other noise like the frequency very high or the flicker noise, you know, like the lower frequencies. Therefore, uh, from this theorem, uh, it didn't mention uh, other noises just for the white thermal noise. Uh, and for this channel capacity expression, there are another form that is uh, in the P plus N over N can be rewritten as one plus P over N or signal to noise ratio. Now for this signal to noise ratio, we have to identify where this reference plane it is. If we talk about this uh, input reference plane for the receiver that has its signal to noise ratio. However, if we are talking about there's a signal to the destination of digital baseband, then for any digital baseband, it requires minimum signal to noise ratio to guarantee the digital baseband can work out the necessary uh, useful message. Therefore, there is a different place to have the different signal to noise ratio requirement. Also for wireless communication up now, we all assume there are two assumptions. Number one, antennas, no matter for transmitters and also receivers, then the point sources. And the second, the receiver site is located in the far field region compared to the transmitting site. Okay, now we look at this the point source. Then for any point source that relate electromagnetic wave or radio wave, uniformly as the spheric uh, waves. If the radius or distance from the point source double, the energy density will be a quarter. That is the basic principle in the free space. Therefore, now for any wireless communication system like here, we have the transmitters uh, with the transmit antenna gain GT and with the maximum available transmitting power PT, P means transmitter. Then for the receiver side, we have the antenna with the antenna gain and the GR, R represent receiver side, of course, the received power level is PR. For free space that has a so-called pass loss, uh, then that pass loss uh, can be get in the free space like the L for pi D over lambda bracket square, okay. For practical application situation due to man, uh, market pass reflections, due to the buildings, due to other environment issues, of course, this path loss will be much higher than this L. Now we discuss the so ideal case in the free space. Uh, therefore, according to any kind of the uh, system textbook for the RF, we can get the receiver side, the power level PR equal to PT times the two antennas gain and also times the pass loss. Okay, that's the things. Now we come to any general receiving structures. We have the antennas and we have the RF front end with added noise figures. Okay, those noise, uh, contributed by the whole front end hardware side. And also for recovering any meaningful message, then we have to have the minimum required signal to noise ratio as an R mean for digital baseband. Therefore, uh, from the textbook, we can get the minimum uh, power level can be detected by any wireless receiver. Uh, the unit is the milliwatt, and then the KD 
K is both my constant D, that is the temperature of the environment. Here, W is the bandwidth. We use the same, um, uh, there's a symbol as uh, Shana used originally. And also an F and the minimum signal to noise ratio requirements. Now, for the transceiver side, then we modify the classical channel capacity uh, equation into following uh, equation here. Uh, there's a W, the bandwidth keep the same, also log uh, keep the same. Then instead of using the white thermal noise N in the original expressions, we use the minimum detectable power level B mean for any wireless receiver site, and also for the power received by uh, this receiver to replace the power transmit averagely by the transmitter in the original Shannon uh, formula. Now we substitute PR in terms of the PD, GT, GR, as above mentioned, we can get this uh, modified Shannon uh, capacity, okay, for the channel. Then the modify the channel, channel capacity here. In this equation, that include the parameters for the front end hardware system, mainly for the noise edit and minimum signal to noise ratio required by the digital baseband. Okay, uh, that is for uh, this modification. Then in following part, I will use this equation to discuss there's a possible maximum uh, channel capacity. Now, that is more graphically described. There's a noise flow or the white noise and a minimum uh, detectable signal level for the receiver. In the here, in the upper left corners, that is the general environmental noise, normally called a noise flow. And any hardware receivers, it has additional contribute noise figures. And for the same environment, different implementation, we can have the different NF noise figures. That strongly depends on the technique to design and implement the receiver. Then we have another required minimum signal to noise ratio by the digital baseband. Therefore, here that we have the P minimum. And also for any hardware uh, receiver, then we have to guarantee uh, this receive the signal and deliver to the baseband. The signal will not be distorted or that is so clean without any interferences. However, Due to the nonlinearity for any hardware system in the RF brand end, if the signal level for the receive exceeds certain limits, then the output signal will not be so pure the receive signal, signal only. And also there are other signals. The first one that is the self-mixing due to the third harmonics we call uh, the, the IM3, intermodulation three or M3 here, then if the received signal level here, higher than this maximum, this for severe free dynamic range, then the received signal delivered to the baseband will not only contain the uh, whatever the sender stand, and also the self-mixing signal there, particularly if there are multiple channels, for example, simultaneously one channel used for one user and another channel for another user. However, those two signal, they come into the same receivers that will have the cross uh, interception or cross interferences. Okay. Therefore, for avoiding such kind of the uh, interferences, as long as we can keep 
the received signal power less than the maximum required signal level for spirit free dynamic range or SFDR, the output from the front end delivered to the baseband digital one will contain only the useful signal originally sent from the sender. That means no matter how strong or how high power level will be by the transmitter, any practical receiver, it has its own maximum received signal there, that is the PR maximum. And for different implementation of receiving hardware system, that will have different maximum RFE for SFDR. Then from this point of view, we just replaced previous slide for the modified uh, the channel capacity, the expression here, uh, we put this uh, maximum, the SFDR here, then that will be practically for any dedicated RF wireless receiver system, that maximum available uh, channel capacity will be like this. Uh, as I mentioned before, this spirit-free dynamic range or SFDR strongly depend on how to implement this hardware system. Uh, of course, for different operating bands, frequency band and different technology to uh, implement the receiver, this SFDR will be different. That means maximum available receiver channel uh, capacity that depends on the hardware. And that also provide us another angle. How could we design or even optimize our wireless communication system? according to the given channel capacity requirement and also hardware design parameters. For the original channel channel capacity expression, it has nothing to do with the hardware implementations. Okay, for example, if we uh, use the bandwidth at 200 kilohertz, that is uh, for the 2G, the GSM or GS1800 standard. And we use here at the general uh, normal wireless communication, the RV maximum will be the minus 30 uh, dBm here for the spirit free dynamic range. And we assume for the different uh, minimum received signal level, then substitute into these equations, we will get different maximum available channel capacity like these figures in the up right corner. Okay, that gave the minimum required signal to noise ratio for the digital baseband from 6 dB, for example, to 14 dB. And also here, a horizontal axis that represent the noise figures required by the hardware implementations. Then that is available the channel uh, capacities from the 5.3 megabit then to the 4.33, for example, depend on what is the design parameters. For example, if we design our RF friend end, this has the maximum noise figure at the 8 dB. Okay, uh, that is quite a, a stringent requirement already for most of the practical RF system. It is not so easy to achieve that. Suppose here, then we can look at what is for the baseband requirement. Suppose we need to get the maximum channel capacity for five megabits. Then we get this uh, signal to noise ratio that will be 
uh, a little bit higher than the 7 dB. Here is in the right uh, lower corner. That is the general relationship for the uh, digital baseband, the minimum signal to noise ratio and the bit errors. Therefore, we get that is the seven bit here for the signal to noise ratio. Then we can find, okay, for this the BPSK or QPSK modulations, then the seven dBm that contribute roughly uh, that the bit error is in 10 power minus two, the order. However, if we want to get a more higher uh, modulation, then the bit error rate, we are getting lower. Okay, then suppose we want to get more higher modulation scheme. Now we come to here, the 12, uh, dB for the minimum signal to noise ratio. And now that is the maximum available channel capacity will be only 4.67 megabit. And also we can find what will be the uh, modulation scheme for the bit error ratio. If we require the bit error ratio, for example, that is 10 power minus four that now, we can have the uh, 16 quorum uh, for this modulation. However, if we, we use the uh, BPSK and so on, we can get the 10 minus nine, there's a bit errors. Okay, then we can choose other things. For example, if that ADB noise figure that is not so easy to be achieved, then we have to, reduce the requirement to come to the 10 dB for the noise for the noise figures. Now for the 10 dB noise figures, if we would like to get the same five megabit the data rate, unfortunately, there is a signal to noise ratio delivered to the baseband will be only five dB. And if we want to increase the signal to noise ratio, for example, come to more higher, then Unfortunately, the maximum available channel capacity will reduce to like this. Therefore, we can uh, look at here, then back to this uh, signal to noise ratio and the bit error to calculate whatever we can find. Therefore, from this, we can use this graph and the equation to design our hardware system to deliver certain channel capacity. Okay, uh, that uh, is the uh, uh, advantage for this modified channel uh, capacity expressions. And that is to illustrate for different, <clears throat> uh, there's the uh, channel bandwidth. Of course, uh, we will have a different channel capacities. However, that is not linearly increased from one to another. And here give uh, for the uh, different bandwidth from one megahertz to the one gigahertz. Again, we assumed uh, there's a spirit dynamic free, the maximum power level for the receiver, keep the same mind 30 dBm. Now, from here, we look at if we increase the bandwidth from one megahertz to the one gigahertz. However, we keep uh, this uh, hardware system, the noise figure as ADB. Now we can find when we increase uh, this uh, bandwidth, keep the hardware design requirement. Now uh, we also keep the same requirement for the signal to noise ratio, SNR minimum. For example, here is a 7 dBm. Now the channel capacity uh, from the one megahertz that respect. Uh, thank wine again, and sorry about the uh, interconnect connections. Uh, it might be due to the international connection from mainland China to the overseas. Okay, anyway, uh, now uh, I'm talking about 
if we use a more higher frequencies and with more wider bandwidth, what will be the a channel capacity available for both the two frequency band? And there are two comparisons, the frequency band one that the millimeter waves, the central frequency around 25.875 megahertz, given by the International Telecommunication Union or ITU, and another that is the first terahertz uh, band for the wireless available assigned by the ITU, the central frequency at 285.5 gigahertz with the bandwidth available 21 gigahertz. Now we substitute those two frequencies and all the bandwidth into the channel uh, expressions uh, for my modification expressions. We assume everything will be the same for the operating environments, the noise figures contributed by the receivers and also distance between the transmitter and the receiver only to change the frequency and the bandwidth. We expect that the channel capacity for the higher frequency will be higher, however, based on this modified channel capacity formula. And those two comparisons now shows that the lower frequency band actually provide more higher uh, channel capacity available theoretically. Okay, that is uh, different from the uh, Periods the in the lead reach. Of course, the precondition, please remember, precondition is the same distance, the same hardware, noise figures, everything the same, except for the operating frequency and the bandwidth. Okay. Now, from that modified equation, we can know if we increase uh, this uh, transmitting power level, of course we could increase the channel capacity and that is their ceilings. We cannot increase unlimited for the transmitting power level. And also we have the transmitting and the receiving antenna gain G and GR. From this equation, we can understand when we keep the transmitter power level PD and we increase the gains for the transmitting antenna and the receiver antenna, that the channel capacity will be increased. That means more higher gain for the antenna, then we change the antenna from omnidirection to the directional antenna. Or in another words, for directional antenna that will provide us more higher uh, channel capacity like this, therefore, if we use the antenna elements that is uh, not directional, however, we form the antenna array, then that we can control the beam. Here, there's a beam that is fully directional. However, when we use this, that in the this beam direction, that will have the higher density of the power level. But in other part of the space, there are no such uh, repeat powers from transmitter. That means if we use the directional antenna array, the spatial coverage will be changed. Of course, we hope also we can have the high gain that the direct antenna or there's a spatial coverage. Then we can use the MAMO system, uh, so-called the beam steering. That is the fully directional and also special coverages. Uh, like here, there is the uh, cartoon so uh, showed. Then that change the directions and we try to cover everywhere. But another problem, that cost is the operating, that is the time sharing. That means we cannot cover the every place with the same time. We have, have to scan uh, this uh, space to in order to get high capacity. That means that is not averagely, or we define only for the peak capacities for only one possible direction at one given time slot. If we are talking about this, the peak capacity is not the capital constantly, then 
we now uh, look at this uh, MEMO system, maximum uh, multiple input, multiple output. Suppose we have the uh, multiple uh, transmitters from transmitter one, transmitter two, to transmitter M with the same power levels. And for the peak power in the space, that is not, there's uh, each antenna's power level M times, but it's M square, why? We have the so-called this uh, Huygens principle that is uh, like the interference to combine in some place of the space and also cancel each other's, okay? That is for the light wave, there's a diagram that is well known. Light wave is also one kind of the radio waves, only frequency much higher. Therefore, if we use more antennas to form this memo system, then in the space that will have the similar phenomena in principle, that is for the different uh, this, uh, point sources with the different numbers and that form the different special distribution of the energy level. In average, that is average for area, but for the different point, particularly that will be higher density point or the lower density point. Therefore, in the spatial, if we use MIMO system, then those energy distribution in the space will not be so uniform. Then that will the peak and the lower, and with this formula, if we have identical transmitting power with the same power level for each element. Now that the peak power will be much higher than just some of the individual elements. Okay, then the noise flow for the same environment might be the similar. Therefore, the peak capacity will increase that didn't discuss by the original channel capacity expressions. And also that is not discussed in the literature for such interference issues. And how could we make use of the original channel expression for describe such uh, the P capacitor instantaneously? Okay. Now, uh, as previous we discussed, we increase the GT and the GR in order to get a directional antenna array. However, for most of the practical implementation in the literature, they use the uh, antenna element without the direction and to form the directional antenna array. Why could we use data direct antenna to form the uh, direct antenna's array? That will provide us more higher again for the antenna array. Therefore, in future, uh, or for 6D, for example, uh, with a direct antenna element to form a direct antenna array, that will, might be more higher uh, channel capacity available. Then <clears throat> we uh, discuss more another issue. Now, in all the literature, when we discuss the wireless communications, as we said in the uh, previously, the antenna are considered as the point sources and the receiver antenna is located in the far field region of the transmitting antenna. And we know the basic uh, microwaves are uh, guided by the pointing vectors or by the max equations. The wave impedance generally that is complex the electromagnetic wave is a vector wave and a complex quantity and wave energy also complex. However, for the far field region, we assume uh, approximately that the wave impedance will be the real and radio wave uh, change from vector and complex wave to the scalar wave and wave energy will be only real. Now, that for far, far field region, we have this propagation. However, look at now with practical applications. Suppose we are using Wi-Fi that is so popular now, and we have the 
uh, pad, pad the antenna on top, we assume that the point source, according to the basic electromagnetic theorems, if we have the one point source just above this uh, ground, perfect conducting ground, then the electromagnetic waves above the upper half space will be there's a so-called image uh, point source just opposite as the mirror reflect from our rear antenna point source that the distance will be here. Suppose we have the one point half meter to use our laptop. And now that the distance for the rear point source and the image point source will be three meters. And the general far field condition that is the distance from the receiver side to the antenna side is to d square over lambda. Lambda is the operating frequency of our wireless that is 4.12 meters. That means if we are using our laptop for the wireless and the far field uh, assumptions, we are far field compared to the wireless hotpoint that 150 meters away. That means if we want to satisfy the far field assumptions, we have to use our mobile devices away from the transmitter 150 meters. I think no one uses that. Like now I'm using wireless connections. Then my laptop is so close to the wireless point on a few meters. That means we are no longer in the far field region and we are just within this mixed energy region. How could we define the Shannon capacity according to the original Shannon expressions? Because that is in log form and energy power must be the real numbers and the noise figure that is must be the real number. But now we have the problem because the energy itself, that is not real only. Uh, for example, we have these connections and that is uh, a primary, uh, this uh, inductor and the secondary and the two coins coupled each other that we learned from the high school already. But that is really uh, another kind of wireless. If we separate the uh, primary and the secondary uh, coin uh, far and far, then in between that the wireless channels, in these wireless channels, they, the impedance will not be so real, the energy also not be the real, and how to describe this field, then what is the capacity can be defined. That means for existing the 2G, 3G, 4G, and the 5G mobile communication, we assume far field region. That in this region for the operation. And however, now for more wireless, we are using this, that is for the advanced wireless or 6D beyond. Now, this field no longer the scalar wave is a vector wave governed by pointing vector. And the impedance is so complex, it's not real. And the energy described mathematically, that is the complex energy. Okay, then we cannot put the complex, uh, this uh, number here into the original channels uh, equations. Therefore, we just propose my B for this, we just use the energy, this modulus. Then also instead of using the white term noise N in the original equations, we just put the P mean here to describe that. Therefore, that is another modification. Uh, there were no mathematic uh, this, uh, background about that. Okay, only the proposed. Okay, now I'll uh, uh, come to the near to the end of my talk. Uh, this uh, picture uh, obtained from the internet that uh, was to show the Tesla experiment in 1900s. And there is the 
uh, they do uh, this uh, high voltage mass and to create the AC sickness. And from this, we can also generally consider that the transmitter and the receiver antenna is also receiver. That is so obviously the energy transmit from these transmitters only partially reach the receiver side. Therefore, the meaningful channel capacity definition should be considered the receiver side rather than for the old energy transmit from transmitter side. Then how to describe this channel capacity? That is a core issue for my talk. And also that is now the practical situation for the wireless applications. And for future, we get more high and high data rates. And uh, we will get more closer and closer from the transmitter to the receiver. And what will be the future, we don't know. Then I use uh, Mr. Shannon's the saying, we know the past, but we cannot control it. We control the future, but we cannot know it. Now we know the classical Shannon capacity expressions. Then we have no control uh, about the uh, past. But now we have our future. We use the 6G. But the environment situation will be different from the pre-assumptions that time Shannon did his expressions. What should we do for the future? That is my main point. Now that is the last slide for my talk. I would like to quote the Yorkie scene to end my presentation here. The future and what is you to be. Okay, that is my talk. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Ma, for that presentation on uh, Shannon's capacity. And now I believe we have a couple of questions <coughs> from our audience, starting with this one. And it says, what is the rationale behind using P minimum instead of noise power in the SNR definition? In, uh, okay, as I uh, just said or explained uh, in my uh, the earlier few slides, uh, for the white noise, uh, thermal noise uh, given in the original Shannon papers, uh, that is not total noise contributed by the any receiver hardware. For any receiver hardware, it has not only for the white thermal noise or noise flow, and also it contains the flicker noise, for example, high frequency noise, and so on. And also depends on the hardware implementation, the skill. That means the minimum power level achievable for the receiver side or P minimum. That is the lowest uh, power level any receiver can get. If signal level lower than that one, even higher than the wide thermal noise, but this receiver cannot get the signal. That is the definition for the P minimum. That is the reason why I use the P minimum to replace the white thermal noise N. I don't know whether that is uh, clear enough for the questions. Thank you so much, uh, Prof, for deep diving into that one. And I think we've got time for one more question and maybe a couple mm -hmm. more. Uh, this next question is, what are your thoughts on quantum limited, I'm not sure how to pronounce this one, is it Holevo or Hovo? It's spelled H-O-L-E-V-O, -E right? So I'm going to assume it's Holevo, capacity for post-Shannon communications in 6G. Your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, sorry again, I okay, let me, uh, didn't have get again, the, yeah. that is uh, what is the, for the HOT. Maybe it's uh, another kind of noises. Oh, I'm not clear. Yes, the, yeah, the question is, what are your thoughts on quantum limited? And the word is spelled H-O-L-E-V-O. -E I'm not sure it's pronounced Hovo or Holevo. Okay. H-O-L-E-V-O, oh. capacity. Oh. 
okay. for post channel uh, communications in 6G. Yeah. Okay. That is. Uh, I don't know whether I get the point or not. That means for the quantum, the limits. Okay. Then the, I think that is another issues for the wireless communications in future. If we use the system or the applied scenario, we'll reach a quantum limit. Then we have to consider the quantum effect. But from my understanding at the moment, uh, the most of the practical wireless system now, from a certain point of view, uh, we uh, didn't consider it quantum limit yet. However, uh, from original channel equation, that um, I think uh, didn't contain or didn't consider this quantum effect uh, too for that. Of course, uh, that uh, might be uh, relate to the hardware implementation, what kind of the physics inside you based on. If we have to rely on the uh, some quantum based uh, there's a receiver or transmitter, we have to consider that uh, phenomenon or that principle. I don't know whether I got the point I get the yeah enough message for that. All right. And of course, uh, thank you so much, Professor Ma, for your presentation on Shannon's capacity and also for answering those questions from our audience. I wish we could chat more, but there's just only, much, only so much time that we have. Thank you once again, Professor Ma. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mike.